consecutive growth. Thank you for the support that you've given each other during these unprecedented times. As a 37 years, we have to think about that is some wonderful growth for you all. But BNI members demonstrated that we are better together. It is living through a global pandemic has been the most significant social, economical, and health challenge of our lifetime. These past 20 months have really tested our strength and our spirit. The BNI members have risen to the occasion time and time again. In fact, in the last 12 months, BNI members like yourselves have closed over 18.6 billion US dollars in revenue from more than, uh, and that's all business passed amongst other BNI members. That's via 12.4 million referrals. Keep it going, guys. It's great work amongst your members. It's an incredible amount of business that we get to see and appreciate. So how do we get here? It's our culture of givers gain. It gave us the confidence to face these challenges, knowing that we were not alone. As we look to the future, we do so with optimism, knowing that the people that were there during the most difficult times in our lives will be there as we emerge together, better than ever. But before we begin our main presentation, I'd like to share the world premiere of a special music video that was done by BNI member Deanna Loveland. Deanna is an amazing singer, musician, and composer and songwriter. And she's bringing to you guys a song she will perform called Better Together. So without further ado, I give you Deanna Loveland and Better Together. I'm Deanna Loveland and I am a pianist, harpist, and singer-songwriter. I'm a mom of three boys. That's brand new to say now because I just had my third boy six months ago. So he's not toddling around yet. He's still figuring out how to sit up right now. <laughs> I started playing the piano when I was five. Uh, saw a harpist playing at a conference when I was nine. And I sat down at the harp and just tried it and could play all the songs I knew on the piano. First, I would say I'm definitely a musician, singer. That's what I'm super passionate about. But it really depends on who's asking as to what I'll tell them that I do, because there's so many different things. We started a garage door company, SNS Garage Doors, two and a half years ago. Brandon, my husband, was already working in garage door sales and service uh, and installation for years before that. And so one of the first things we did was join BNI. Uh, I had a friend who had told me about it. I had already visited as a musician and it was a great thing for me, even though I wasn't a member. Being a, a visitor, I got a lot of gigs from it. And um, so yeah, we just dove right into BNI with our business and it's been a great thing. During the pandemic, the hardest thing for us has been watching a lot of our friends struggle. It's been good in a way to help and just be there through that um, and in whatever ways that we can. Thanks to BNI and the members of our chapter, our business is not just surviving, but thriving. We're looking forward to the future with excitement, knowing that those people who have been with us through this most difficult time of our lives will continue to be there as we emerge together better than ever.
Two words, simply amazing. I absolutely love that song. Thank you, Deanna, so much for summing up how we feel. And for all of you that are watching at home, we'll make this video available on BNI TV shortly after this presentation so you can share with your chapters during International Networking Week, as well as share it on social media and maybe show us who you're better together with, thanks to BNI. Now I have the pleasure to introduce the host of today's Better Together Live, BNI's very own George Barlow. George serves as the director and head of global franchise development at BNI. He leads all global franchise development and expansion efforts, including new country development globally, as well as sub-franchise development support in existing countries. George has spent the last 21 years working in franchise development operations, mergers, and acquisitions. He's in his previous leadership experience, his roles include uh, with Wykert Real Estate Affiliates, Executive Franchising Consulting Company, Prudential Real Estate Affiliates, and Real OG. Since joining BNI, George has been instrumental in launching BNI franchises in Marouche, the Czech Republic, Panama, Ghana, and the relaunch of Barbados. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you George Barlow. Thank you so much, Danny. Um, hello, again, I'm George Barlow, and I would like to welcome you to today's presentation of BNI Better Together Live. We are streaming live today to over 76 countries around the world. Our very own BNI founder and chief visionary officer, Dr. Ivan Meisner, along with chairman, BNI chairman and CEO, Graham Y. Miller, will share their insights from around the world on current business trends. First, let me introduce Dr. Ivan Meisner. Dr. Meisner is the founder and chief visionary officer of BNI. He founded BNI 37 years ago, and it has become the largest and most successful networking organization in the world. He supports over 285,000 members in 76 countries. He's helped businesses grow through some of the most difficult economic times in the world's history. He's called the father of modern networking by CNN, one of the top networking experts by Forbes. Dr. Meisner is considered to be one of the world's leading experts on business networking. He's a New York Times bestselling author who has written 26 books. I would also like to introduce you to Graham Weimiller. Graham is chairman and CEO of BNI, the world's largest 
networking organization and successful. Under Graham's leadership, BNI has grown to 285,000 members meeting weekly in over 10,500 chapters worldwide. Graham's experience working with business leaders in 76 countries across the globe has made him an expert in business strategy and operational excellence. He has led BNI directors and supported BNI members the past two years through the most difficult business environment of our lifetime. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. As I said, the past two years have been one of the most difficult business environments of our lifetime. With BNI now in 76 countries, you both have a significant amount of global experience. Please share with our listeners your insights and best practices for growth in 2022 and share with us how we can be better together. So let's get started. Graham, this question is for you. What business trends do you think will define 2022 and perhaps beyond? Thanks very much, George. Great to be here with all of you. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to BNI members and directors around the world and to all guests. Uh, we're really honored to have you here as part of this event that kicks off International Networking Week. So George asked about trends for 2022 in the uh, business uh, landscape. And I'd like to cover a few that I think we're all experiencing, but I think that will be um, really uh, defining how we think about um, growth and economic development in 2022. Um, so I think we're well underway in many economies in a recovery, certainly very, very bumpy 2020 and 2021. So lots of economies now are in recovery. I think we're going to transition in many economies to more of a surge. Uh, but it will be very uneven, and that will be uneven across geographies, but also across certain industries. So uh, it's going to be a very dynamic year, but I do think the recoveries and many economies are going to transition to more of a surge. Um, I think many organizations have uh, experienced um, difficulty hiring the talent they need to support the recovery and also some of the early stages of the surge. I think the labor market will begin to normalize towards the end of 22, but not completely until well into 2023. Um, and lots of the supply chain difficulties that we all experienced in uh, 2020 and 2021 um, are still here with us, although I think they're starting to uh, uh, become a little bit more normalized. And I think um, almost in tandem with the labor market as we get towards uh, you know, the end of 22, I think the supply chains will be um, more consistent. Um, and I think really uh, that will be a, a great uh, help to lots of businesses, both big and small worldwide. One thing that is probably new to many entrepreneurs and business leaders who may be listening today is inflation. And, you know, of course, that's been uh, something that's not been as prevalent maybe in the last 10 or 15 years in most economies. But I think we'll see a little bit more inflation in 22 than um, certainly many of us are used to. So a lot of small and medium and even large businesses are going to have to think carefully about, you know, how they're sourcing uh, supplies for uh, their businesses, but also how they're pricing. And so inflation is going to be certainly part of uh, the vernacular, part of what lots of business leaders are already talking about. And I think throughout this year and really into 23, um, you know, inflation will be something that a lot of folks are, are thinking about. Now, within that context, lots of opportunity. One of the things that uh, we are seeing, I'm sure many of you are seeing, is that businesses of all sizes now can really be cross-border. I don't just mean sort of uh, with, you know, across regions, but really across countries and global. Uh, and that is a huge opportunity. Really, the global marketplace is now available to businesses of all sizes. So that's a, a, a huge opportunity for, uh, for all businesses. Um, I also think there's a increasing focus on uh, just having really diverse and inclusive teams. We know that diverse and inclusive teams are more creative and that creativity as it relates to design of products and services uh, is really important. So I think that will continue and that's a terrific thing. There will be an increasing focus on the environment and sustainability um, and, you know, organizations that usually wouldn't uh, have a huge um, footprint in uh, environmental uh, matters will be messaging and really thinking more about sustainability. 
Uh, again, that's a very positive uh, uh, improvement maybe over prior years. Um, I also think businesses of all kinds will be looking to foster longer term relationships with clients and customers versus kind of a transactional approach. Um, and so you'll see uh, more um, membership uh, opportunities, more um, more effort to build lasting relationships with clients and customers. Um, I do also think we'll see more in terms of collaboration, in terms of strategic alliances, joint ventures, um, organizations working together to address that global marketplace that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then finally, you know, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of innovation uh, and whether that's, you know, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, the metaverse, cryptocurrencies. And I think some organizations have kind of dabbled with that. And, you know, some small organizations have started to, uh, you know, expand more rapidly into some of those technologies. I think this is the year where a lot of those technologies are going to become more pervasive and consumers are going to begin to um, expect some elements uh, or some services uh, to be delivered via those emerging technologies. So uh, it will be an exciting year. It will be dynamic. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit later about some ways that uh, entrepreneurs and business leaders can be positioned for success in 22. Uh, but it will be an exciting year. Well, thank you for that, Graham. Um, Ivan, what are your thoughts? Well, thank you, George. It's good to see you again. And uh, it's great to be on the virtual stage uh, with you again, Graham. Uh, you know, in, in 2018, I wrote an article for entrepreneur.com that said the future of face-to-face -face was online. And I thought that would happen within five to 10 years because of technological advancements like mixed reality, holographic imaging, the metaverse. But COVID kind of <laughs> expedited the transition to online networking. Clearly, that trend, in my opinion, will continue. Business people need to pivot in order to stay up with the introdu introduction of these kinds of technologies. It's important that we look ahead. There's a reason why your windshield's larger than your rear view mirror. It's important to have the clearest view possible of where you're going and where you wanna go. Now, don't get me wrong, it's important to know what's behind you and to learn from where you've been. However, if all you are looking at is your rear view mirror, it's because you're going backwards. When you do that in life, you're not living in the present and you're not aware of what may be ahead of you. I believe in being connected to the past while looking to the future. George? Wow, that's fantastic, Ivan. Um, I've got another question for you, Ivan. Uh, we hear every day uh, people talking about the new normal. Uh, can you provide your perspective on what the new normal will look like? Yeah, well, you know, our business lives will be a lot more new than normal. Uh, the businesses that will succeed in 2022 and beyond will need to be open to change and finding new ways to run their business. True leaders in business, regardless of their industry, need to be resilient. They need to think creatively. They need to make smart tech investments. The expansion of the digital integration into business was inevitable, as I mentioned earlier. Strategic marketing leaders must now take the lead to advocate and deliver on strategies that embrace digital. I'd like to say that the status quo will go, but the truth is the status quo is gone. There will be some settling in, but things are not gonna be the same. We all know this at some level. And if we think about it, our daily lives are full of yesteryear's changes that we now embrace. The telegram, the rotary dial telephone, the pager, the two pound mobile phone. God, I actually remember having one of those. All of these were the status quo of their day. And now the majority of us rely on our smartphone, which was itself a major change in disruption to, to industry. Whether we like it or not, the future involves change. Today, this, today's status quo will go and the change will happen. We can choose to resist, resist it or we can embrace it. Not only embrace it, but I say lead it. Don't be disrupted, lead the disruption. George? Absolutely, change is always happening. Uh, Graham, um, how should entrepreneurs and business leaders be thinking about leadership moving forward 
Also, what's expected by customers and what will make them most successful, both personally and professionally? Yeah, so the first way I'd answer that is um, authentic leadership. And I think it cuts across each of the components of the question. I think it's what customers and clients are looking for. I think it's uh, better for leaders to lead with authenticity. Um, and I think over the short term and the long term, it makes them more successful. And what do I mean by authentic leadership? Uh, I mean, humility, uh, informality, um, really being relatable, and also being in close touch with clients and customers and also teammates. So I think authentic leadership is now more than ever uh, the most important uh, way to lead for uh, entrepreneurs and, and business leaders. I also think it's really important that uh, entrepreneurs and business leaders are investing in themselves. You know, oftentimes you're thinking about investments in technology or team or you name it, but um, investing in themselves may be the most important. Now that doesn't need to be a really expensive three month uh, executive education course. It could be uh, a TED talk. It could be uh, a book off of, um, you know, Amazon, you name it. Uh, so it doesn't need to be really highly structured um, learning, but it does need to be learning and it does need to be frequent just because technology and the landscape of global business is changing so quickly. And separate from uh, kind of professional development, leadership development is just awareness. So as an entrepreneur or business leader, you know, being aware of what's happening around the world, being aware of what's happening down the street, really, really important. So just general awareness, being, um, you know, uh, very plugged in. Uh, and then also uh, putting a premium on uh, fitness and holistic wellness. And, you know, more is going to be uh, demanded of entrepreneurs and business leaders than ever before. So they need to take care of themselves so they can be what we call sustainably successful over the long term. So those are some of the things that um, I would comment on, George. Health and wellness. That's really key. Ivan, I, I might have a good one for you. You know, we all learn from our challenges in life. So as you look back to the past two years, what challenges have you encountered? George, there have been many challenges. One mistake I made was going out at the beginning of 2020 to buy an annual planning calendar. In March of 2020, everything I had planned needed to be replanned. And then again in April and then again throughout the year, I was constantly reviewing my plans and adjusting as BNI did as well. Uh, planning for many companies used to be an annual exercise. And once it was finalized, the focus was on execution. Today, you need to constantly evaluate your business health within the ever-changing uh, business environment. And that's the world that we live in now. We live in a world of predictable unpredictability. But the one thing that has remained unchanged for the last 37 years is the power of referrals. They are the engine that drives any business. How that's done may change, but the need for referrals remains the same because we are all better together. George? Understood. Um, Graham, nearly all businesses are looking to grow. Uh, probably each business that's participating in this live event are looking to grow. But what are some specific pieces of advice you might provide for businesses to accelerate their growth in 2022 and beyond? Well, first of all, I really like Dr. Meisner's comments, predictable unpredictability. I just, I think that captures kind of the last few years and probably uh, the, the years to come as well. So kind of planning for that um, unpredictability, it's a great point. Well, so um, I think you're right. You know, all businesses are looking to grow and to expand. They're passionate about what they do. So let me just touch on a few points that uh, may be helpful. First of all, the old adage, raise capital when you don't need it, I think will be really important. There's a lot of capital right now in the markets, uh, whether it's in the private markets, the public markets, you name it. Um, as uh, an entrepreneur or business leader, um, we shouldn't take that for granted that that will always be the case, right? There's a cycle to capital and um, certainly raising capital when you don't need it is important because it may be that capital that's helping to expand your team, your technology, you know, your footprint uh, around the, your country or around the world. Uh, second, I would say really communicating your purpose. That's as important now as communicating um, the elements of your uh, product or service. So communicating your purpose and, and reiterating it internally, externally, you name it. Why do you do what you do? What are you passionate 
uh, about with your client, with your uh, product or service. So communicating your purpose and continuing to communicate that um, is really key. Really focusing on hiring strong generalists on your team as opposed to specialists. You will need specialists in certain areas, but making sure that you have um, an excellent uh, group of generalists that can handle project management, uh, that can shift between roles. Again, we're in a very dynamic uh, economy and that will continue to be the case. And so having good general managers and leaders is really key. So recruiting them well, onboarding them well, uh, and then leadership development once they're on board is really uh, important. Uh, we also would say that networked businesses are gonna be more successful. Why is that? Well, it's not just the referrals and the closed business. Absolutely, those are important to growth-oriented businesses. It's also the learning that you get from other entrepreneurs and business leaders that you're networking with. Um, it's the relationships that are so helpful, not only to the referrals, but also to uh, other partners, strategic alliances, you name it. And then the encouragement. And, you know, we talk a lot about encouragement, entrepreneurs and business leaders, all of us, you know, need encouragement for the inevitable bumps in the road. So those are uh, just a subset of the benefits that come from being networked. So with that, I'll hand it back to you, George. Well, that's fantastic, uh, Graham. I love that. We all have to know our why, right? You know, have a vision and a mission. Ivan, I've heard you speak about co-creation. Uh, please share with our listeners today what co-creation is and how leaders can apply it to help grow their business. Thanks, George. I'm working on a book about this very topic. Uh, it's called The Third Paradigm. It should be released next year. Uh, and we did a survey of over 4,000 people as a part of the basis of doing this book. Uh, we are moving into the era of co-creation. Now, this concept begins where cooperation leaves off. The difference between cooperation and co-creation is the difference between working together versus creating together. You may collaborate on a project, but you co-create products and services. Co-creation is a significant step beyond cooperation. It's about bringing different parties together to actually produce, improve, or customize a product or service based on a mutually desired outcome. Co-creation is about jointly creating value. Um, in the 2000s, the internet brought this to the forefront. Crowdsourcing has become a critical tool for engagement. And the advent and widespread application of digital technology has made customer empowerment a must. Society is rapidly moving from a passive to a more participatory consumer culture. And in addition, uh, many want to be sure that there's a social cause related to the brand and the process of co-creation. Uh, organizations engage, engage in co-creation because they wish to foster the buy-in of a stakeholder, you know, their interest and increase value through innovation. So look for my book in 2023. It's called uh, The Third Paradigm. Back to you, George. Great, uh, Ivan. That's fantastic. Working together works. So co-creation, I love it. Uh, Graham, uh, technology has played a key role in BNI's success over the past two years with BNI Online. And how should uh, growth-oriented companies be thinking about technology to power their growth moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much, George. Great question. So, you know, technology is really a part of all businesses now, whether they're using it in a, you know, sophisticated uh, way or just kind of a basic way to do some basic tasks. I think the first point is it doesn't have to be overly expensive. It doesn't have to be a prohibitive investment. Um, and, you know, there are more options than ever, especially for, uh, you know, small and medium sized businesses. Um, I would definitely advocate uh, before making an investment of any kind that, you know, a business uses a test and learn methodology to make sure that the technology that they're thinking about deploying really fits what the client or customer needs. And, you know, a lot of times uh, we all want, um, you know, the technology that we might need in five or 10 years, but maybe what we should do at this point is buy the technology that we need for the next couple of years. And there are a lot of reasons for that. One, so that um, you can keep your P&L uh, and your balance sheet sort of uh, in the right place, but also because the technology is changing so quickly and the capabilities that today might be really expensive may be fairly um, cost effective um, in just a few years. So uh, the other part is, you know, prioritizing first the technology that makes 
uh, interaction with your business easier for clients and customers. So if a technology makes that legitimately easier for clients and customers, that's the place to start. Then uh, focusing on any technology that affects uh, the customer or the client more generally, but don't forget technology that really makes your team more productive. But that might be kind of the third phase. So start with what makes it easier for your clients and customers uh, to do business with you and you will be in good shape. Absolutely, thank you, Graham. Um, I can tell you technology has changed the very nature of how we go about doing business for sure. Uh, Ivan, in uh, 2022, what's the one thing business people can do to accelerate their sales growth? So it's been proven that when you increase your base of referral partners, it drives more revenue growth. We looked at the data and at a, a BNI chapter of 25 members doubles to 50. The members of the chapter can see as much as 76% more referral revenue. Even one or two new members can make a huge difference. And each new member often brings a fresh new source of referrals to the chapter. Referrals are the best way to experience sales growth. BNI helps build relationships that enable people to create referrals for life. George? Great. Well, hey, we're running way ahead of time. And if you all don't mind, uh, Ivan and Graham, I'm just going to throw a couple of more questions out to you if you don't mind. Uh, Graham, this one's coming to you first. Uh, 75% of, of executives said that they will invest in more hybrid experiences over the next 12 months. Uh, BNI introduced its hybrid format back in October. Uh, can you tell us more about the benefits of BNI's hybrid meeting offering? Yeah, absolutely. We've seen a lot of interest in the hybrid uh, format. And the reason is it combines the efficiency of BNI Online with all the quality and context of BNI's in person format. And so the way BNI hybrid uh, chapters work is the first week of the month they meet in person, and the subsequent weeks they meet via BNI Online. And we found it to be remarkably effective, especially for uh, those that can't make the weekly meeting in person. Uh, it opens up and makes more accessible all the uh, great aspects of the BNI membership. So um, our goal is to have networking become ubiquitous, that the weekly meeting, whether it's in person or online, uh, is kind of the marquee uh, highlight of the week, but that there's um, continuous uh, connectivity between members in that chapter throughout the week. That's how we see them pass the most business and have the most closed business, uh, you know, each, uh, each week. So we want to um, uh, continue to uh, uh, invest in the in-person format, the hybrid format, and BNI online, but we found a lot of interest in the hybrid format. Great, great. Ivan, um, when you founded BNI, did you ever imagine the impact on people's lives, uh, job creation, and, and communities as a whole who uh, uh, come over these years? You know, George, honestly, not when I started BNI. and um, That came later. Uh, when I started BNI, and I was just trying to put together a, a networking group that was relational and not mercenary. Um, my, my Brody moment came in uh, uh, December of 1985. Now, uh, George, do you remember uh, Sheriff Brody in the movie Jaws? I did. Okay, well, uh, at, at, towards the end of the movie, uh, he uh, sees the, the shark for the very first time. And it's huge. And he walks on over to the, to the captain and he says, you're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> and that came to me in really in December of 85, where we opened 20 chapters, really without trying. Um, I was looking for something that, that I would participate in that was, wasn't mercenary, you know, where people were just trying to sell to me and wasn't totally social. It was relational. And what I discovered was that I had struck a chord in the business community. Um, business people wanted referrals and they needed referrals. By 1986, I realized that this could be a, a huge movement with over 10,000 groups, which we just recently achieved. Uh, I believe that if you impact enough communities, 
you can impact the world because we are, in fact, better together. Back to you. Guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Ivan Graham, is there, well, let me start with you, Ivan. Is there any last words you'd like to share with our audience today? And then I'm going to move over to Graham. Yeah, I think I'd like to remind everybody uh, the phrase that I used earlier, um, you know, our windshield is bigger than our rear view mirror. And it's very easy to get caught up in all of the challenges that we've had in the past. But the key to success is looking forward. And uh, your network, you today more than ever, you need your network. Your network is a beacon of hope in a sea of fear. And so I urge you to use your network effectively to build your business through challenging times. Thanks, Josh. Grant. Um, any last thoughts from you? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one of the questions that um, we've been asking ourselves and we've seen BNI members uh, asking themselves over the last couple of years is what can they do now that they could not do before with all the capabilities that are available to businesses of all sizes? Uh, you know, really anything is possible, especially when they're working with um, other businesses that really care about them and uh, want to see them be successful. So, um, you know, the last couple of years have been bumpy, uh, and I think this year will be a dynamic year, but lots of opportunity for businesses that are continue to ask that question. What can they do now that they could not do before in terms of expanding, not just across their town or city, but across their country and really uh, potentially becoming a global business. One of the things that we love to see uh, within BNI is what we call BNI busy. It's where a member uh, is, you know, a, a little bit frazzled because they're getting a lot of referrals, and their biggest challenge is um, finding enough talent and growing their team so they can support those new clients and customers. That's a good thing because that means that you know more opportunities happening for that uh, that member, that business, that community. Uh, and that's what BNI is all about. So anything is possible. Uh, and we'd love to help every business, you know, achieve their potential and help every entrepreneur and business leader um, really uh, achieve their dreams. Well, great. Uh, thank you very much, Graham. You know, because I've been taking some notes here and I have a few takeaways is that um, our business lives will be a lot more new than normal. And uh, true leaders will need to be resilient, be creative and make smart tech investments. Also, technology has played a key role in BNI's success over the past two years and will continue to play a critical role, I'm sure. And finally, when you increase your base of referral partners, it drives more revenue growth. So those were my takeaways for, for today. Uh, Graham and Ivan, thank you both so much for sharing your time and fantastic insights with us. I know I'm walking away from today's presentation with a lot of great ideas. I hope that all of you have enjoyed today's live and that we truly are better together. Danny, now back to you. Thank you so much, George. Phenomenal job hosting today's Better Together Live. Uh, I too am going to give you guys just a little bit of a tidbit that I wrote down and, and I even mentioned impact community. Um, and really to start impacting community, one of the great ways you can do that is somewhere I'd love to give to, and that's the BNI Foundation, because they invest in communities around the world. And I will quote uh, Beth Meisner, while children are still are 20% of our population, they are 100% of our future. So if you'd like to help impact your community, you can make donations to the BNI Foundation at bnifoundation.org. It is a great way to help um, our children educate in business and go out and build better futures for us. Um, but again, thank you gentlemen so much for today. Wonderful. I've got a notebook uh, full of notes. Um, I would also like to thank all of you members who are joining us today. It's We can't do this without you and we are better together because of our members from around the world uh, growing and making stronger connections. But if you've enjoyed the kind of business building insights and, and ideas that you've received today, I've got a little secret for you. You're going to love being a part of the 2022 BNI Global Convention. And this year, it's going to be hosted in the jewel of Southeast Asia, and that is Singapore. Known for its contemporary architecture, its lush natural landscapes, phenomenal food, and warm hospitality, it's the perfect place to make connections and memories. Um, as we conclude today's event, please 
watch our uh, closing video so you can see the wonderful uh, memories that we're going to make in 2022. And we're going to reveal to you guys our theme for BNI's Global Convention this year. Really excited about that. Can't wait to hear the roar of the crowd as we all get back together in person. And at the end, you can scan that QR code to get registered. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope whichever part of the day it is for you that you have a wonderful rest of the day and continue connecting during BNI's International Networking Week. Uh, drop some uh, messages in the chat. We'd love to see what you're doing for International Networking Week um, as we connect throughout uh, until next uh, until this Saturday. Again, thank you for joining because we are better together. Here you go.